like most coaches is to have your team play complimentary football. Can you come close to that? Do you feel like this year? No, not not this year. And and that was the challenge to uh, to the team was that our best players got to play their best four quarters, and this is the game where we all got to come together. Um, you know, talked about the uh, the analogy of the triple braided cord. You know, kind of outlined it for him that one can be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Um, and tonight, what you saw is uh, I felt like, you know, offense was starting to find a little bit of a rhythm. You know, Brennan, you know, looked like Brennan, uh, but we just didn't play complimentary football. You know, we, we, we had the, the situation, and, and I got to do a better job. You know, credit to Duke, uh, but we got to coach better. I got to do a better job preparing them, and, uh, and the kids got to play better. Uh, but that opening, you know, situation or drive, you know, we, we flipped the field. We, kept, we, we punt the ball inside the third, uh, to the 13-yard line. Been challenging the defense all week. Hey, we, this is an area we got to get better is situational football, in particular backed up. We've had several backed up drives that we let them out. It's raining, right? You're playing field position. You know, we let them out, and then we have three penalties, three huge, you know, penalties on that drive to, to give away points, you know, and, and so we gave it to Duke. And, and of course, they're going to capitalize on that momentum. And then, you know, we got a big return, and that's potentially, you know, one to the house. And that's what we've told the kickoff return team, man. We're one block away, we're one person away, and, man, we fumble the ball, you know, on our own. Now, now in credit to Dameek, he's trying to make a play for us. But, man, then we turn the ball over uh, right there. So we're just – we're not playing smart football. We're not playing complimentary football. Uh, and, and we're struggling when, when the bullets start flying to, to just, you know, come together as a team, hunker down, battle for each other. And uh, uh, just really disappointed uh, in, the, in the penalties. You know, and, and, and again, those are big penalties. You know, those, those are big ones. And they're, they're not necessary. And if you saw me on the sideline, I was, I was irate, you know, because – we're struggling as a football team to try and win after the snap, you know, win the trash talking contest, win the face to face and the pushing. You know, we need to focus on during the play, doing your job with great fundamentals, great effort, great technique, and then get your eyes to the sidelines so we can process the next call coming in so that we can play fast and, and just really, really disappointed. Uh, in the uh, in those penalties uh, that we uh, that we had, they cost us, you know, in some situations, and then that creates momentum for the other team, and then now you're reeling, and it's hard to play complementary football where, you know, defense finds a way to get you know a stop, right? Don't give up a touchdown. Offense goes and scores the next drive. Now you're potentially up seven to nothing, and then there goes the momentum. Uh, and that's where we got to get better as a football team and just, you know, understanding situational football and, and, and just, you know, get away from, from, from playing, you know. And, and I love KT, and I told KT at the end of the game, like, we're in a two-minute drill, but the clock don't stop until, you know, you get out of bounds inside of two minutes and we're dancing to get extra yards. And now we got a second and one. We give up clock. So just a lot of things that I got to, you know, help these guys to, to, to grow their knowledge, uh, their knowledge about. How do you address the the tone yeah, I mean, it's – and like I told the coaches, I told the coaches that, hey, if, 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 if I continue to see it, I'm just not going to play guys. You know, and, and it seems like there's, there's, there's the same culprits that are, that are coming out. And if they don't get it corrected and they're not going to have much longer, then I'm going to start making decisions and I'm not going to play guys. And, and, and what I don't want to happen – and, man, there's, there's a bunch of good young men in our, in our locker room. Now, there's a lot that they have to learn about, you know, how to be a team, uh, how to win as a team, you know, how to play disciplined football. Uh, and I want them to do it, but if we continue to have these problems, then, then ultimately I'm going to have to make decisions because the one thing I'm not going to sacrifice is, is the core values of this, of this program. And it's embarrassing uh, because, you know what, as soon as I got here, I cut out the fighting in practice. Uh, most, most programs allow you to fight. I don't let the guys fight in practice because I don't need to waste time. You can't do it in the game. We need to focus on fighting, you know, during the six, seven sna uh, seconds of the, of, of the play. Uh, and again, you got some bad habits that you got. And, and football is a, is a game of emotion. I get that. But it's controlled aggression. You got to be under control. You got you to stay locked in. Uh, and just don't be selfish enough to say, you know what, it's about me in this moment that I'm going to push a guy after the snap or I want to talk a little bit more trash to where you get you know, some type of penalty that costs your, cost your team. You know, uh, the, there wasn't. 
just uh, the the conditions, the situation. You know, I felt like I felt like offense was was playing better than we were at Syracuse. Uh, now we got to do a better job with the batted balls, and we'll correct that. And, and and again, guys just playing all the way through the whistle. You know, not not relaxing. Uh, once guys understanding that once guys can't get a pass rush, all they're going to do is try and jump into throwing throwing windows. But no, uh, was playing. You know, just just playing straight up, trying not to be overly aggressive, uh, and put us in a in a deeper hole. <laughs> I don't know if you got one, please let me know. Because I, I swear, it's almost like these guys got to get behind before they get started. And, and, and you know, and I challenged the guys uh, when we came, you know, when we came in at half, because there were a couple of things that I saw uh, at the beginning, you know, of the game that, that just kind of let me know, like, all right, uh, I see a little bit of, you know, we've had a little bit of success, even though we didn't win. You know, guys played decent. We made a comeback that that we that we weren't going to start the way that we wanted to start, and then knowing that Nick Jackson was going to be out. But those aren't excuses. Those are things that you know we got to own, be honest about, and uh, and try to correct. How much is that? Go ahead. How much is not having Nick Jackson in that first half You know, I, I'm. I don't think it was 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 as significant as uh, as you could say after you lose a game. Uh, I think that just the the penalties, because if we don't have those penalties, right, then we can create some momentum. And uh, he was doing a great job of trying to, you know, coach the guys up on the sideline. Uh, but you know, to to me in the first half, it was more just you know the penalties, um, and then you know offense not you know not finishing drives and and helping to flip the uh, flip the momentum. And then we had the special teams uh, turnover and the block punt. I mean, that's two times. And one of our you know the frustrating thing is one of our our, our keys to victory or in our plan to win is to be special on special teams. And right now we're hit or miss. You know, some games will. We'll, we'll do our job on special teams in some games we won't. It goes back to that first question of, of guys just truly understanding to play complimentary football. Every play matters. There's no giveaway plays, you know, especially when you're, when you're competing at the level we're competing when the margin for error is uh, really, really small. You know, I, I didn't bring it up until in the locker room after the game. We didn't mention it one time. Um, and, and my approach is it doesn't matter who you're playing. And that's what I got to get these young men to, to fully buy into is, and, and, and the same thing with the conditions. You know, if you're going to play to conditions, you're going to play to a location, you're going to play to a time of day, you're going to play to the uniform that you wear. When you start using all those things to, to justify your motivation, then your motivation is going to be inconsistent. And, uh, and I just, just sense that, you know, the guys, man, I thought they had a great week. Man, you think about all that they had to go through over the last 24 hours uh, with the change in plans to travel, with the power going out. Man, they, they handled that. Like with a ton of maturity, and I told them before the game, I was really, really proud of how how they handled that, and uh, I just was anticipating that they were going to come out. We had a we had a nice, you know, quiet calmness and confidence about us at our pregame meal. You know, those are the things that I look for, and that's that's what I'm trying to get these guys to understand, man. It's little things that I'm looking for to give me confirmation that the culture is taking root. You know, I snatched. Uh, uh, I snatched Antonio out of the game because it's a it's a third I think it's a third and goal down on the three yard line or the two yard line right they're going with tempo I got him and I got 26 jogging over there to get lined up they're not even ready when the ball snap man it's just those little things right and and until we correct those then then we really that means we haven't decided right and that's a big thing that I talk about with this team is you know before you can expect right to be to to be victorious and to win you got to decide. And those are the decisions that we aren't making consistently enough, right? We'll make them one play, and then we won't make them the next play, which lead to, right, those plays in the game that tip the game one way or another. Well, I didn't know the story. When did the power go out? Oh, it was it was last night, uh, about uh, about eight o'clock. But you, and but you know what? We made we made the most of it, and we had a great we had a great time. We were, we we were going to watch a movie together, um, but everybody rallied together, and you know that's what's so frustrating is because you know what's in them. Man, you know, you know what's in them. I just got, I just got to break some bad habits. Okay, I got to get these guys to fully believe. You know, and 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 everybody says they believe, man. But it's it's some it's, it, it it takes a lot to believe. There's a there's a certain level of commitment, certain level of sacrifice, certain level of trust, um, discipline, accountability, all those things uh, before you can even expect to to win. I think the guys know how to expect to win, 
but we got to decide, you know, every single day, every single play uh, that we want to win. You guys said this was Brennan's best week of practice. Yeah. And that the offense is coming along just not fast enough. Correct. And, and I think if you look at Brennan, man, Brennan was a lot more comfortable in the pocket. He was staying in the pocket. He was stepping up in the pocket. Man, he delivered some strikes. You know, we had a couple of drops. Uh, that we should have that we should have made. Uh, anxious to see what the what the biggest issue was uh, with the with the batted balls, but I think it was the offensive line gave him a ton of time. Guys quit rushing, and you're trying to find. He looked a little bit. There were times where the, he kind of looked like the old Brendan, just had a bunch of time to find find guys open. Um, so so man, he's I'm proud of him, and that's why I told him at the end of the game. I said, man, I apologize to you, man. I got to do a better job of of helping you. Uh, by getting all these guys to buy in, because I thought he he looked you know as comfortable uh, as he's looked uh, thus far uh, in the uh, in the system. Who were the players that are fully bought in trying to help him get dragged the rest of the? Run? Yeah, you know I'm gonna keep that I'm gonna keep that in house, right? But there's there's I mean there's and and, and again, they're all good young men in that locker room, and um, but we got to take it to another level, right? So I think I think. Uh, again, them fully understanding where I'm coming from, right, and trusting me and what I say. You know, I, and I'm not going to say there's mistrust, but they haven't quite seen the results and they've been trying, but there's still consistency within that trying that we got to get to in order for the results to come. And then when we have results, right, stay humble, right? You know, stay humble, man. Like, like I was on Chico's butt today. Right, she goes. But today he was player of the game last week, you know. And then, then, then this week, you know, there were some things that I saw, especially in this game. It's like, dude, that was last week. Do it all over again. Like the challenge of, okay, I want to be the player of the game every week. Like that's how I want to play. Like, and this football team saying, you know what? Regardless of what people think or what people say, we determine, right? We determine who we are. And and right now we're just we're we're letting other people and other influences, right? We're that outside out, outside in mentality, and we just got to stay inside out, uh, go back to work. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this bus ride home. We gonna own it, man. We we just lost, right? That's on us. We can't blame anybody else. You tip your hat to do, but we gotta own what we just put on film. And then hopefully, you know, the guys will take accountability. We'll come back to work on a uh, on Monday, and and the guys will be be honest. You know, be transparent, uh, be willing to work and correct, take that accountability, and um, and go start trying to be one and zero next week. That's the beauty of it, right? It's every week. It's it's uh, it becomes monotonous, but when you learn to to enjoy and and love the monotony, is when you uh, truly become successful. We're gonna let-